Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. <clears throat> we worship you, Lamb of God. Friends, once again, welcome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once again, welcome to the Potter's Gate uh, uh, this morning. I want to welcome you. If you're joining me this morning, wherever you are, thank you for joining this morning. Well, this morning, by God's grace, I'm just going to get straight into some very important uh, um nuggets and you know thought line god has been dropping into my spirit in relating to you know what he has been speaking to us i hope we you know are taking this you know words very very serious and uh, you know important i hope we are guiding these words in our heart because what is going to save us in days to come will be the things that god amen has said to us in the past so we have to be like mary we have to learn amen to take in the word of the lord and guard them jealously amen within the concepts and structures of our being let us pray father we come before you this morning we thank you once again for your voice your heart you're speaking to us regarding the days before us we're looking into this year and beyond you're talking to us about how to occupy and we are beginning to understand what you mean because oftentimes when you speak we don't really get a full grip of what you have said so we thank you lord that you are unpacking this word to us you're revealing your heart to us you're revealing your mind to us you're showing us your intentions you are speaking to us and we are asking lord that our spirit oh god will continue to grow and mature and be attentive to your voice 
that in the days where we have seen the shared level of darkness and deception oh god that has eaten deep into your church oh god that we are once again turning our hearts to you yes father crying out to you to help us oh god that we will not be swept away by the deception by the delusion oh god by, by the by the wiles of the enemy but rather we will continue to look unto jesus we will continue to look unto jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith that anything that does not recognize that does not see and appreciate Christ to God will be things that we will reject, we will refuse. So we thank you. Help us once again that as we continue to press in into your heart, into your desire, Lord, we will have a better view. We will have a, a better and a clearer insight. Thank you for everyone joining us this morning. We honor you. We glorify you. May your word increase once again in our heart. May your word bring us to the place of, of truth. May your word bring us to the place of rest. May your word bring us to the place where we are truly calibrated, where we are not deceived, where we are not, yes, a, a lie to, where we are not charmed by the lies of the enemy. Oh, Father, may your word increase in our heart. May there be a multiplication of the seed of truth. May we grow. May we come into fullness in you. We thank you. As you continue to speak to us regarding your intentions for our day, may we not flinch. May we not turn away. May we not turn a heart of rebellion, but rather may we turn to you. May this word continue to awaken us morning by morning. You awaken my ears to listen like one that is being instructed. Instruct us, O God. Build us. Empower us. Energize us to the glory of your name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Amen and amen. Well, friends, once again, welcome. Like I, like I said earlier on, the Lord is speaking to us. And um, if there's anything we need in this season, is the hearing ears, is the is the ability, is the grace to be able to hear, thus hear the Lord. Of course, that's here the Lord that points us, amen, into the dimensions of divine instruction. Thus said the Lord that points us into the reality, amen, of what we should do, what we ought to do, like the sons of Issachar, amen. Yes, thus said the Lord that brings us to the point where we know the times and the season. Because knowing the times and the season then helps us to adjust, amen, our hearts. You see, as we journey with God, as we journey into the things of God, life is about going somewhere. I mean, I, 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 I was so sad, you know, uh, uh, yesterday, I, you know, a few days ago, the Lord actually laid, you know, a brother in my heart. And, uh, and in fact, that's part of what the Lord is opening my eyes to see. You know, this person just kept coming into my heart. And I thought I was going to call him because I've not, you know, seen his, uh, message on facebook for a while so you know he just kept coming to my spirit and uh, so i said okay maybe I, i'm i'm not that close to him but i know him you know from afar you know and uh, we've had one or two you know uh, interactions so i said to myself i was gonna you know call him only for me to see yesterday you know on facebook that he's passed on that he's dead and I felt so bad. And the reason why I felt so bad is because when the Lord spoke to me about him, all right, I did not respond. I thought, well, I had the time. I could always call him. I will call him, in fact. So yesterday, you know, I was just checking, you know, Facebook. And I saw that this guy just passed on. And I said to myself, God. And then it hit me again that what God is speaking to us about, you know, the things that we're dealing with has to do with our how quick, how prompt we are to the voice of God. You understand? Many of us, we like to, you know, when we talk about procrastination, procrastination is a, is a spiritual disease. All right? It's, it's something that is eating our inner life, our internal structures, because we procrastinate for various reasons. Of course, those reasons are not, you know, are not based on truth, are not based on God. You understand? I mean, here's the Holy Spirit prompting me about something I should have and that's normally what I would do. I, I would have, should have, you know, responded immediately. And if I'd done that, I'm sure I would have felt a bit better. That even if he's dead, I would have felt better. That, oh, 
the Lord really actually drew my heart towards this person, but I didn't respond immediately, you know. And so when I saw his obituary, I was like, God, help me here. No, I think that's part of what the Lord has been speaking to me because it's on that line that, you know, for a while now, God has been speaking because when we talk about occupying till Jesus come, there is a mindset, there's a belief system, there's a there's an attitude that is, you know, a way of existence, a way of living that they are drawing us into. All right. Like I always say, you know, occupying is not just about occupying a space. You know, in the in the natural human realm, yes, we would do that if we have allowed the Lord, first of all, to occupy our life in such a way that when He speak, we are able to quickly respond and adjust. We're able to, you know, move. That what we're doing is not based on our own human intelligence, but based on the instructions, the guidance, the leading of the Holy Spirit. And to me, that those are the things that is, you know, uh, uh, you know, making you know sense here all right be, be, being awakened in our response system being awakened all right being prompt amen yes being quick amen to to respond and and that will deal with excuse me that will have to do with a, a, a belief system and that belief system we've been able to trace it to what is known as the mind of christ Amen, friends. We've been able to trace it to something that is known as the mind of Christ. That the mind of Christ, amen, is a spiritual philosophy that God wants us to wear in engaging, amen, the nature of the days that we live in. Excuse me. <clears throat> that the mind of Christ is a spiritual belief system. Amen. When we talk about mind, let's let's remove our you know thinking our beliefs from you know something that is carnal or i want to say the mind we always think of or right, something that is ours that is carnal that is not spiritual no the mind was designed to be spiritual the mind was designed amen to assist the holy to assist the holy spirit of course the holy spirit speaks to our spirit but whatever the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit has to, has to go through the mind. So the mind is a filter, if you will. The mind is the filter of how we understand the things of God. Remember, I said, you know, was it two days ago? I said, with our spirit, we are able to communicate. We are able to hear God. All right. But in order to relate and to communicate or to relay what God has said to us spiritually, amen, into the human realm, which of course, where we need it the most, amen, we need a mind. The mind, amen, is the gateway in engaging, in relating, in connecting, amen, with the natural physical realm. All right, your mind, amen, is the is the filter, is the is the image of your attitude, of your belief system, of your character, who you are, amen, to the world is reflective on in, in relating to the state of your mind. So your mind plays an important role, amen, in your you know spiritual position, in your spiritual understanding, in your spiritual interaction you cannot amen leave your mind to wander away to be hijacked by the enemy you understand so and when we have been we've been looking into what the mind is and what the mind represents because at the end of the day your life is the summation of the state of your mind no matter how good you are with prayer, no matter how good we are, you, you know, with the Bible, with on, the, you know, you know what the Bible says. If you cannot play out, act out, demonstrate what Amen you've read, you're as good as as you know any other unbeliever. There are, I mean, that's the reason why we say people are religious. To be religious means to have this knowledge, knowledge, knowledge about the things of God. But yet, Amen, your 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 posture, your interaction, your you know mannerism, your behavior amen speaks otherwise so we we come into the place of unism we're coming to the place amen of of you know of congruence we're coming to the place amen of oneness we we're breaking away from duality amen we want our spirit soul and body amen to walk in unity amen in obedience to what god amen requires and demand of us and that is going to require that we become amen we become deliberate we become amen yes you know a present we become you know a, 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 there's a word that i I need to you know that I, I you know I'm, I'm looking for we have to amen you know be, be it, it must be something that we're deliberate about 
You have to be deliberate about how you're going to live your life today, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. Amen. It cannot be just doing it because that's the way everybody does it. No, you, you must say to yourself, this is the way God wants me to live my life and that's the way I'm going to live it. And this, amen, will speak into some of the things that we are tracking. And so, uh, uh, we, we've been dealing with some very important points uh, and I just want to share some points with you this morning like i said the lord woke me up with uh, uh some points and i really really want to drop them let's let's start amen by looking at romans 13 all right romans 13 and few other scripture gives us a framework to this uh, uh spiritual you know a uh, 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 lifestyle if you will heaven is calling us into remember we are dealing with amen strategic occupation how to occupy till jesus return that is the broader amen uh, 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 you know theme of this message okay the broad theme of this message is occupy till christ return and that's what the word says all right they say we must occupy till christ return now that 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 is a very broad you know you know subject that requires you know not just one you know dimension of of sight all right we have to develop you know a, a multi-layer amen spiritual discipline we have to develop if you will you know dimensions of existence from every realm from every reality of what god amen has ordained for us it, 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 we have to come into the point where like i was describing at the early stage of this message we must have sight all around our sight amen must you know must be complete like the cherubims we must have sight we must have insight into every area every aspect of life that there is no amen, area that you are found blind that there is no area you are found wanting because in that area the enemy is going to sneak in the battle of the earth is the battle of occupation all right i remember explaining to us amen that America has amen, the, one of the largest you know, military base in the world. I think followed by Russia. All right? I've not done justice to that thought pattern, but I think I'm going to do it. Not today, because it's important. I, I want to use some natural you know, I, ideologies, belief system, amen, to explain to us what we mean when we say spiritual occupation. I mean, there are some of us right now, to a certain degree, you know we've been able to occupy certain areas and we, we've been we've been able to establish our our hold our you know authority if you will in that area but then when we look when we pan the camera into other aspects of our life you find the enemy occupying those th space amen you find the enemy occupying those space you find yourself lacking you find yourself wanting in those area yes you have not fully amen become you know a, a, a superpower to become a superpower amen you have to have resource you have to have a capacity you have to have manpower you have to have the kind of things that nations like america you know russia china you know uh, and have in iraq so they're not just occupying their own you know immediate you know a nation or state but they have amen ability capability resource amen to extend their tentacles to extend their influence into other areas you understand in fact into other nations so they will have they have a base in Djibouti they have a base you understand in, 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 in Japan I mean what has America got to do with Japan I mean America is far there Japan is on the other side but they've got a base there they've got a base or uh, in Hawaii and they've got a base somewhere you know in Africa yeah they've got base you know all around all, all around the world that is how you define superpower so that if there's an attack if there's any thing all right and they will tell you where well, we we have those base there all right to defend our allies but but that's is beyond just having their allies is be is be is, is about amen them basically showing you know the the, the 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 their force their strength because i mean if you've got a base in a nation a country all right that is far from your geographical region and you are able to maintain that base do you know what it costs to maintain one base just a base you know what i mean to maintain a you know a base in you know in another territory that is almost equipped you know equivalent to some nation's gdp what it takes to maintain just a base and now they don't have one they don't have two they've got you know i think america has got about eight, 80 you know uh, you know foreign base 
military bases. And beyond military bases, all right, they, they've got you know economic interests in those because wherever they put their base, they, you know, that is just a point where they also express, you understand, or interface or interfere with the economy of those regions. That is how the world understand, amen, the concept of occupation. When 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 a place is occupied, it means that all right, you know, there are other forces, there are other interests, okay, that you know speaks that define and determine your political, you know, uh, 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 you know, thrust your economic, you know, realities. That it's not just about you defining what you want, okay. And, and we have seen the Roman Empire, all right. In fact, the Roman Empire used that amen, powerfully to control and to influence the nations. Wherever the Roman Empire, all right, you know, conquer, they establish a base there. And we have seen that through the scripture or through history that when a nation is conquered, all right, when a nation is conquered, the nation that conquers another, all right, you know, enthrone their own king there. Okay, they will leave you there as a king, but you are their puppet. Meaning that at you know, at, you know, at every month or at the end of the year, all right, you must, you must, you must, you know, release certain money, you know, certain God knows what. You must send it back to you know to that nation that conquer you. That is how you know the issues of kingdom, kingdom and kingdom warfare back in the days, all right, are established. When you are conquered, it doesn't mean that they will totally destroy everything. They can conquer you and still maintain everything in the in the land in fact it maintained the government but that government is subjected amen yes to a higher power so you can be having your life amen everything is going on for you you still keeping your job all right you still keep your home you still keep your marriage you still keep your children you but you your the influence the influence of that thing amen no longer belongs to you it's now amen owned by the one who conquered you so the fact that you have everything going for you does not mean that you're not being conquered <laughs> because amen the one who conquered you need your resource Amen. Yes, to you know, to continue to do whatever they need to do, and that's how the game of war goes on. So we must, as believers, also look at all of these things and understand, Amen, what the Lord is calling us into. Because listen, our warfare is not flesh and blood. Our warfare, Amen, is in the realm of the spirit, is in the dimension, Amen. Yes, of the spirit. And guess what? We are us in this warfare. We're dealing with government. Remember, we wrestle not against with flesh and blood. We wrestle not against with flesh and blood, but against powers, against rulers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You see, the the, 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 the the spirit that we are wrestling with, amen, they are not some morons. They are not some, you know, uh, you know, on, 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 on informed spirit. They are not some spirit that don't have a sense. They are not, you know, spirit who don't have, you know, education, who are not intelligent. No, the things that we are dealing with, amen, are highly sophisticated. Are you getting what I'm saying? They are highly sophisticated. The enemies that we are dealing with, amen, are the most sophisticated, you know, entities. Fallen spirits, amen, are not, when you say darkness, when you say spiritual darkness, the, the way we understand darkness, the way our view <clears throat> about darkness, in fact, is part of how the enemy has deceived us. Because, you know, this darkness that we're dealing with, amen, are highly intelligent. If they're not intelligent, look at the world system. Look at, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 the belief system of those who are driving, amen, certain value system in the world today. Just look at them. They are the richest people. They are the most influential people. So, to a certain degree, amen. They are very intelligent. But they are using those intelligence, amen, to cripple, to pull down, to, to stop and to hinder. I mean, when the devil came to, you know, to, to the garden, I mean, he, he, was, he was having an intelligent conversation with, with, you know, with Eve. Did God actually say? Did God actually say? So if you are not, if you are not highly intelligent, and of course our intelligence, you know, comes from where? Comes from God, comes from the spirit. The Bible talk about, amen, yes, that we must operate from the, 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 the fruit of the tree of life. They didn't say the tree of the fruit of the, you know, the, the, the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Remember, the fruit, the fruit of the tree of life is a higher dimension of existence than the tree of, yes, the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. That thing's got knowledge. Don't be deceived. 
Don't be deceived. The, the, the fruit the enemy wants you to eat has got intelligence, has got knowledge. We tell you if, you, if you eat this thing, your eyes will be open. You will be like God. So your idea of spirituality, your idea of warfare, your idea, your mindset amen, about, about what we are dealing with has to shift. In fact, the wrong mindset we have about spiritual warfare is a major amen, yes, hindrance to the, to the advancement of the church. In fact, it is an advantage for the devil to continue to keep us. Have you, I, I know I, now I'm, try, I'm deviating, which I don't want to, but I don't know if anybody I've seen you know the expose of of bbc regarding you know the tb joshua saga and and you know and the church you know they call them the disciples of tb joshua i don't know if anybody has watched it but if you have not i think you should because it, it, it to give you an insight into what god is is dealing with and into what god is calling us to understand because you see we can be so called spiritual and be enslaved and be captured I mean, how do you go to a place to look for healing, to look for deliverance? I'm not even going to talk about, you know, people searching. But you, you've, you've watched this thing on the TV, on the telecast, you know, on you've seen this man perform miracle, blah, blah, blah. And you leave your country, you know, you leave Europe, you leave, you know, United Kingdom, you leave South Africa. And you go down to Nigeria, you understand, looking for healing. Only for you to be entrapped for 13, 4 years in the church, amen, that is in prison. And you are basically being raped. And I'm not talking about being spiritually raped now. I'm talking about being raped from all angles. Physically, emotionally, spiritually. And I'm not saying this to praise, you know, uh, 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 BBC. Because BBC didn't do that, alright, to expose TB Joshua. They are trying to tell you, look at the church you guys believe. You see what they are doing when they say they are Christian. You see, you see, you see what they are doing. That's what BBC is up to. But that's not my point. And that's a lie. Because T.B. Joshua do not represent the church. Do not represent Christ. Anyone who, amen, has been following the, the, you know, the word of God. And this is the reason why I will continue to do what I'm doing. I know I may not be saving everybody. I, yes, I know I might not be able to reach out to everybody. I'm praying God will give us resources so we can, we can create platform to really, amen, you know, push this message out there because people need to hear the truth. Friends, I was watching this, 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 you know, this, this documentary and at a point i had to stop it i mean i could not hold my tears how in the world can people be so deceived how in the world can people get to the point of being so deceived and the people could not leave they took their passport they took everything i mean in the name of looking for god searching for god in the name of wanting freedom and it dawned on me that isaiah the world needs your message I mean, I'm here, I'm struggling with financially. I'm struggling with so many things. I'm struggling and I'm standing on the truth. I'm standing on the word of God. I need money to do so many things. These people don't bother about money. In fact, the people coming to them are bringing money. And with the money they give to them, they still manipulate them. And I said to myself, Father, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me to continue to be a sound box to maybe man of God maybe you watching me this morning but help me oh God to take the truth to the ends of the earth because I believe that if more people hear the kind of things that I'm talking about that we're talking about we will save some if we can't save many we will save some we will save some and this is the burden of my heart that I'm sharing with you and I'm not saying this thing all right to you know I'm just telling you the burdens of my own heart this is the reason why daily, as the Lord grants me grace, amen, I come and I say this thing because my heart really wants the world, amen, to know the truth, to be free so that, amen, they don't go for religion as an alternative. Look at young, you know, beautiful women who are looking for truth, who, 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 who need freedom, who are looking for deliverance, go to a wrong place only for them to be made twice the son of the devil. That bothers me. In fact, it does, it does more than bothering me. It tears my heart. I feel grief. I can imagine the way the father feels. All right, 
that is that let's move on okay I, I hope i hope i'm communicating i hope the things that i'm you know saying is is making sense because if we don't understand what spirituality is from the perspective of christ if you don't know that then i tell you you're a potential amen uh, 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 uh. Oh, how do I put it now? You you will fall. You will be you will be lied to you because there are so many things that will look spiritual. There's so many things that will sound spiritual. Uh, people will sound spiritual, but but their idea and their belief and their concept of spirituality is far away. And that's why on this platform you will see that one thing. All right, that we do is to project Christ because it's in Christ we are able to identify, measure, we're able to decipher, we're able to know if indeed what we are saying, amen, is in line with truth because truth is pointing you to a person and that person is Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If the truth that I'm preaching is pointing you to me, then you better run because that is deception. That is man building a cult. Any truth that somebody is preaching, amen, in the name of God knows what, amen, that is pointing them to something, that is pointing them to themselves, that is not pointing them, amen. Listen, the truth does not even point, you know, you to you. The truth points you to Christ. Because it's in Christ that you get your freedom, that you get your liberty, that you get your deliverance, that you get your whatever you're looking for. But that is secondary, the primary thing is to be able to know how to get to that point how to live within that order of a life you see what i'm dealing with amen are the subtle deception what did i call it the subtle deception yes the little the little foxes that spoils the vine you see when the enemy wants to deceive a, a, a spiritual person a mature spiritual person he doesn't come all right with with the big you know uh you know uh uh evidential concept of you missing god no 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 it, it he just comes and you know tweak a bit it tweak it just that truth it just shift shift the the, the pendulum a bit as you just shift it a bit yes when the pendulum is no longer swinging amen at a particular pace of balance amen it becomes an error if you if you don't know how to balance and walk amen the balance truth you can embrace the you can embrace error you can embrace lie and in fact still claim that amen you are being spiritual i can i can assure you 90 percent of most men of god excuse me 90 percent of men of god women of god today in africa in, well I, i'm using africa not like you don't find them across the world in fact you find them most in america all right 90 percent of you know these people who, who call themselves servants of god have missed the mark you know why i know that because 95 percent of their message is not christocentric it's not christ center it's either is healing center is deliverance center is miracle center is you know is prosperity center is you know grace center you know sir it's, it's about what god wants to do for you listen the gospel is not it's, it's not about what god wants to do for you the gospel is about what god wants to do through your life so if your message is uh, yes come to god he will do this for you i can assure you you're already building a, you know a pathway that is going to lead into error let that sink in a few days ago i i deleted some 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 people from my facebook timeline including some men of god so if you're watching me and uh, you, 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 you're still on my Facebook, it's because I, I believe that you're salvageable. And I'm saying this because, you know, we speak from a heart of sincerity. So don't think, well, because you're watching me, I, I don't know that you're watching me. No, you, you are left there because I, I'm watching and I'm seeing if indeed you are a seeker of truth. Because a day of reckoning comes. I'm not looking for 5,000 followers, 10,000. No, 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 no. We want, amen, this word to go into the heart of those who need it. I'm not preaching for popularity. I can say, I'm sure by now you know that. My life is sold to Christ. So this man of God, I deleted them. You know why? Because they are all hypocrites. They encroach on you like the devil. Just to sneak in and listen and hear here and there and there. And, and either go gossip about it or take what they want to take that they feel suits them. You understand? Yes. Why are you saying this, Isaiah? Because this is the day of truth. 
and truth is not covered. Hallelujah. Truth is open. Truth is beer. I deleted them. And some few other people. You know what I do? I, you know, every six months or, you know, a year, that, that about, I go through my Facebook, you know, uh, 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 friendship requests. I looked at all of the people. I, I don't do things because, well, that's what I, no, 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 no. We, we follow the guidance of the spirit. And I say, no, you, no, go, you go, 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 go. We keep you there. That's the principle of the kingdom. Because I'm responsible, I'm responsible to everyone the Lord brought into my, into my, into my atmosphere, into my domain. Yes, for a reason. The things of God, hallelujah, cannot be handled, you know, by, by a heart of levity. No. A little leaven, they say, leavens the whole arms. A little leaven leavens the whole arms. The truth we know is what sets us free. The truth we don't have a relationship with will never set us free. Why are you saying these things? Because God wants us, amen, to straighten up, to align with him. Another place where, all right, you come to hear something so that you can go and, you know, you know validate your error. No, 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 no. No. Those days are over. We, we are looking for people who want to walk the talk, who want to live their life based on the values of God and the kingdom. And that is going to cost you everything. Because it has cost me everything. What are you saying? Romans 13. And do this understanding the occasion. Excuse me, what is the occasion? What is the occasion? Understanding the occasion. You know, like I know that, you know, occasion is determined by the event. Occasion basically is an event. An occasion, amen, will often define certain things, certain, you know, behavior, certain dress code, amen, certain mannerism. Yes. It says, and do this because of the occasion. If you don't know occasion, you misrepresent. If you don't know the occasion, you may be embarrassed. If you don't know the occasion, amen, you may be saying the, the, the wrong, the, the right thing on the, in, in the wrong platform. <laughs> occasion, and do this. Look, that word is, is a call to action. And do this understanding the occasion. Now, he's going to explain that occasion, but I'm trying to expand your mindset. I'm trying to call you back to, you know, I mean, when you know that many of you this morning will be dressing to go to work, right? Many of us will be, you'll be dressing to go to work. Now, there's a way you dress to work, amen, from Monday, you know, to Thursday. I know that, it, you know, Friday, you know, most companies across the globe has kind of softened, you know, a dress code. In fact, Friday, they, 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 they you know, they allow you to, to dress casually. So on Friday, you see a lot of people with you know, tackies and jeans, you know, and just maybe a loose shirt because it's Friday. I mean, I don't know where that comes from, but that is a general accepted standard, okay, today. But you can't dress tackies and in jeans and your shirt on Monday to work. Even though it's accepted, amen, on Friday. But if you do that on Monday, people are going to look at you like, you know, there's a way your boss is going to look at you. There's a way your colleague are going to look and say, okay, so what, what's going on here? Oh, are, are you you know just coming to work you know for maybe an hour or two going somewhere because that would be the mindset because they expect you amen to dress corporate they expect you to look corporate they expect you to look decent amen they don't expect you you know on friday or you know monday to dress your your your, your you know your bust your button is you know halfway down all right and, and you know you just come in with a loose shirt and you just don't care you know you know you just just walk into the office doing your own thing Except in, in, in a culture where, you know, they, 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 you know, they, 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 
the atmosphere allow you to dress like that from Monday to you know you know to, to, to Friday you, and there are companies like that because of the nature of the job they do particularly most of this tech you know company yeah but if uh, let's say Max Mark, you know, Mark, Mark, the owner of Facebook or whoever, all right, is invited, okay, to come speak to the Congress, to come speak to the House of Senate, amen, to come give a report about something. You understand? Yes. There is, there is, there is this unwritten code of how you have to dress. You can't go there, amen, just wearing your t shirt, even though you are the owner of Facebook. But you're going to be facing, amen, yes, the lawmakers, the, you know, the legislators, you understand, yes, of your nation, of your country. You can't go dre dressing with a t-shirt, all right, they won't find that funny, even though you are the most richest person. Because that occasion defines and demands that you are formal. Are you getting the point that I'm making? You've got to understand this, this kingdom values. It's not about dressing now we're talking about. I'm only using that to help you to see something, amen, that is that is important when we're dealing with, amen, issues of the kingdom. Because if we don't understand this thing, the enemy can take advantage of you not understanding, not being, amen, a, a sensitive to the occasion and you come dressing in a particular way and you're defeated. Say, you mean my dressing can defeat me? Yes. Because then they, they will then they will conclude that this guy is not a serious person. This lady is not serious. So even how you show up, how you turn up, amen. Yes, in the things of God, in the in the in the in the in the atmosphere of you know a new season, how you turn up, how you represent, what you say, how you pray, all of that, how you think, amen. Yes, speaks if indeed you're ready or you're not. I'm just trying to explain that scripture. Amen. Romans 13 verse 11 says, And do this, understanding the occasion. Do you understand by now what I'm, what I'm you know, uh, uh, saying? Do you, are you getting the point? And do this, understanding the occasion. Then he went further. He says, The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. That's the point that we are making. Amen. Yes. In the past, you know, eighth session. Today is our eighth session on the concept of, you know, kingdom strategic occupation. I've done eight series. Today is the, is the eighth series that we're doing. And all I've been saying from the beginning, all right, of that, you know, series till today is you been awakened. Amen. And, the, and, you, and you being awakened will require that, amen, you understand the reason why heaven needs you to be awakened and what you are being awakened to, if you will. All right? Yes. Because if you're not awakened to the occasion, then you don't know the dress code. The dress code is a mindset that you need to wear. It's the belief system that you need to wear. All right? Or when we say it's a new season, what does that new season mean? What, I mean, what does it entail? How do you interact How do you interact when you go to excuse me when you meet somebody for the first time how do you speak what 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 how do you communicate how do you interact how do you present yourself do you know there are people who are very good in reading other people they've studied that in psychology particularly those who are in the business world you know one of the things that if you're a CEO if you're a CEO, one of the things that you're going to learn all right, in the business school is how to read people, how to, how to read the environment. Because they, 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 because they know that you are going to be speaking on behalf of a company. Beyond that, all right, you're going to be interacting on issues that is going to cost the company. Maybe you, you want to seal a deal all right, that is going to worth millions of dollars or rand, okay? You, you cannot just go there and, and speak on a face value. No. They, they, they want you to read mannerism. That is some of the things, amen, they teach. All right. Uh, 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 what they call it now? You know, in one of these courses, they, they, they teach you all of that. They teach you how to read people. You know, the way they move their eyes, the way they raise their eyebrow, all right, the way they smile, okay, the, the way they dress. 
all of those things about your life that you don't see are a message to other people. <laughs> it's a message. So they look at all of that, amen, in their conclusion, if indeed. In, in, in fact, they look at, you know, the car you, you came with. And they know if you go to if they if they know if you are, if you are going to borrow that car, just to try to come and seal a deal, they know. They make their research because that's what they are paid for. CEOs don't just get to be paid high, you know, you know, you know, high money. No, it's because amen they have high value, and high value requires that you pay them high so that amen they can save the company, amen. Yes, from all kinds of fraud. If you go to a business school, those are some of the things they teach you, you know. They teach you about, you know, human psychology. Maybe I'm maybe I'm overflogging this message, but I hope somebody's listening to what I'm saying. Because many of us, you know, ignorantly are falling into the trap of the enemy. Because we lack discernment, because we are not awakened. We are not awakened to truth. Truth is vast and truth is complex. You can be limited, amen, with the truth you have. Or you can grow and expand in the truth. It all depends on the condition or the quality of your spiritual state. Why do you think, amen, yes, CEOs are not dumbling into spirituality in running companies? Because they understand that even if they don't know what spirituality is, but they need spirituality in the space of running a business. Because business is about spirituality. <laughs> they know that. You may not know that. You may not even appreciate that. You may think business is just about making money. No, the real guys who are top there, they know that this is not about just making money. They know, amen, that business is about power, is about occupation. It's a world of competition out there. And I've spoken about that. So let's go on. It says, the hour has come for you to be awakened from your slumber. Let me ask you a question. In terms of your spirituality, what area are you still sleeping? What is the area that you can still say, amen, that you are slumbering in? Oftentimes we don't know, except God raises people, amen, to point those area of our spiritual slumber to us. Because how, how, how can you identify, amen, your area of slumber when you are asleep? <laughs> I, I mean, it doesn't make sense. You, you are sleeping and you still want me, amen, man of God, to identify my area of slumber. How can I know? I mean, I'm, I'm asleep. That is why God sent people to us. That is why God sends prophets. That's why God sends, amen, leaders, apostles to come and awaken us. They awaken us in that area where we are sleeping. And to be asleep, amen, is to be operating in what I call blind spots. So if you're following what we're talking about, if you're listening to me, you will notice that many of our messages, amen, will awaken you, amen, from slumber, will bring you, will bring to your awareness, amen, those areas, amen, of your blind spots. You cannot follow this message, this platform. You cannot be following me and not be aware and not be awakened. No, you will because that's what the message is all about. The message is calling you to have spiritual sight. And we're saying that sight, amen, can only, amen, be honest when you walk, amen, in the awakening of the realities of the demand of God for your life. So this is not just about being, hallelujah, praise God, you know, speaking tongues, you know, you know, you know, pray a bit and do all those religious formulas that we do and we think all is well. No, 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 no. That's not what we're talking about. That you may do at, at the grade one. But as you begin to climb the ladder of the spirit, there are things that will begin to unveil, unpack. There are layers, amen, that you will begin to speak into. There are issues, amen, within the construct of your mindset that they will begin to engage. There are strong goals, amen, they will begin to call you to deal with, amen. Yes, there are layers, amen, of, of ignorance that they will begin to highlight. They want you to deal with so that, amen, when you see the truth, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't mistaken it for a lie. And when you see the lie, you don't mistaken it for a truth.
Very important principles there, friends. Listen to this. And do this. Understand the occasion. The hour has come for you to be awakened from your slumber. He's not speaking to unbelievers. He's speaking to the church. Amen. In Rome. He's speaking to amen, a people who are spiritual. Who go to church. Who serve God. But Paul still say, hey guys. You've got to understand the nature of the days you live in. So you are not caught in the... And listen friends. Let me tell you this. There are things that the enemy has you know, strategically positioned across our life. Across our path. To push us to go into slumber. You know, yesterday I, I was out. I went to power because I'm preparing for my transition, all right, to, to move to Joanna's book. So I'm beginning to put some things together and all of that, all of that, and all of that. And uh, of course, I came back, I came back home and I was tired. I was so tired, I tell you. I was so, so tired that all I just wanted to do was just to sleep. But I know that I couldn't sleep at that period in time, so I had to do some some things. And then I'm sure it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, around I think it was around nine o'clock. I was I was gone. I was on. I just hit the bed, which is strange for me. To, I don't sleep at that time, but I was fast asleep. Why? Because I, my body was tired. And this morning it occurred to me that, you know, sometimes the enemy may just, you know, create certain things around our life just to weary us. It creates events. You know, have you met certain people you come into their life by the time or they come into your life by the time you finish discussing with them, you feel drained. <laughs> you feel sapped. You feel you literally feel drained. All you're having was a conversation. You feel drained. You feel tired. There are events you do. And I know, of course, whatever we do requires energy. But that's not the first time I've gone to pal and do one or two things. But yesterday was just extraordinary the way I was so tired. And I knew that what I needed was to sleep. You understand? And sometimes, and that's very good. When you're tired, you need to sleep. But here's the flip side. Sometimes the enemy, all right, what? <clears throat> just because he needs to get to you, just because he needs to do certain overtime work in your life, he knows that when you're awake, he can't do that. So what he does is he creates an occasion. Remember the scripture we were reading yesterday? Yes. While men were sleeping. Yes. The enemy never attacks you while you're active. Because he knows that when you're active, he can see. You can see, excuse me, you can see him. You can see his work. And then, of course, you can fight back. So what he does is he creates all kinds of issues and events. And listen, what I'm saying can deal with just a little thing and can deal with issues of, of life that deals with your destiny. He can get you busy in ministry to tire you, to weary you, so that when the day comes for you to use your energy to do what God has assigned you to do, you don't have the energy again. The enemy, like I said, is a master strategist. The demons, the spirit that we're dealing with, they are master strategists. They know how to get you, amen, tired. They know how to weary you. They know how to bring you to a point where you don't know. <laughs> Have you seen children when they wake up when they wake up in the morning? They're full of energy, full of strength. And by the time it's afternoon, you, you want them to, you know, take a nap and they refuse to take a nap. They're just fighting. That's my son I'm describing now. <laughs> he fights, he, you know, afternoon sleep. No, 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 no. He fights. No, he fights. He fights. He screams. He does everything. He doesn't want to sleep. So, leave him. <laughs> by 7 o'clock, at most 7.30, he's gone. Sometimes while he's eating, he just, the eye closes, the eye shuts down. Because you can't fight nature. You can't cheat nature. Are you getting this? The enemy waits for you when your energy is sapped. That time when you lift his hand, he's like a, he's like a dead person, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's what the enemy does to many of us. You think I've got energy, I've got strength. Ah, I'm not. Okay, they say, leave him, leave him, leave him. 
we know when to come like i always said the enemy is not in a hurry to strike you he wait for the time and period or season of your life when your spiritual energy is sapped then they come for you they said all right while men were sleeping why didn't they why why didn't the enemy you know come when they were awake because it doesn't make sense that's going to require a lot of warfare <laughs> it's going to require the enemy see listen satan does not believe in wasting his energy he's a master strategist is a master strategist when it comes to warfare and that is why i'm dealing with the concept of warfare kingdom warfare amen in the in the call to occupy you know every one of us has got a point of weakness a place with weakness that's why we must live our life in the lord so that when you are weak his strength is perfected in your weakness but if you don't know that okay and you think I've got strength, I can do my own thing, I can do my own thing. They say, leave him. <laughs> leave him. Or leave her, whichever one. Is somebody listening to me? The hour has come for you to be awakened from your slumber. Your slumber, your slumber, like I said some time ago, your slumber is not my slumber. Every one of us has got, amen, our own unique place of slumbering it could be where you amen have been awakened i am sleeping in that in that in that in that context it could be where i'm awakening you are fast asleep amen in that context so excuse me where is your own place of slumbering are you seeing how the lord is just unpacking i've not even moved from romans 13 and i still have a scripture that i really want to share with us this morning but are you seeing what god is doing Are you seeing? You can be well informed in an area. And by the time you do, you know, a 90 degrees turn, you are fast asleep in another area. You are living literally in ignorance. And the enemy like it so. Eve was aware of certain truth in the garden. But in the area that she has not been, that, that the truth has not been awakened in her heart, that was the area the enemy came. Because the enemy could see that ah, if he's slumbering in this truth, ah, that's it. Guys, that is a good point. That's a good place. That's a, you know, the point we need that's the gate we need to come into we need to enter into if uh, our life uh, if was a gate amen that granted uh, satan access into the garden amen and i don't mean to say anything negative to all the ladies no no i'm not into i'm not into all of those you know nonsense teaching they say no you're bashing the ladies no no i'm not into that this is a reality that we're talking about and we need to know Amen. We don't apologize for truth. So this is not about no, 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 no. It, it that's the, that is history. That is what happened, and we need to correct it in our own day. If was amen, the the weakling, the gate that the enemy yes used to access the garden. Even though the blame amen is to the man because where was he? <laughs> but my point is, Satan did not go and speak to Adam. Satan went to speak to Eve because you know Satan could see that this area Eve, Eve was not sure because she's been thinking about that fruit. She, she's been thinking, you read the scripture for yourself. So the enemy only capitalized, yes, on a weak spot, on a weak area in the life of Eve. Did God actually say? Adam was aware of what God said, but Eve was not fully persuaded let's leave it that way if was not fully persuaded because through the conversation you will notice <laughs> but to make it more worse adam even though he knew 
he abdicated. So, excuse me, you can know and still abdicate, amen, your position, your persuasion, amen, your sense of authority, just because you want to pacify, just because I think Adam, amen, of course, you know, I, I should take all the blame, but if also, of course, has her own blame, because she shouldn't have entertained. Yes, Lucifer. And I believe one of the reasons why if entertained Lucifer was because of the way Lucifer presented himself. Remember, Lucifer, amen, that's his name, that's his real name. Satan, amen, is a description of his character. Oh, I love this. Satan is a description, amen. Satan is, a, is defined as the deceiver. But the word Lucifer means the light bearer. So when Eve saw this guy, Eve must have thought this must be one of God's angels. Of course, he was one of God's angels, but a fallen one. <laughs> All right? So it was easy for her to what to entertain the conversation. Let me ask you, let me ask you a very good you know straight question. Even though I can't see you, I can't see you to re respond, would you like to ha have a conversation with a lunatic, a madman? All right, you see somebody crazy. You know this guy for the past you know. 500 days of his life, uh, you know, yes, of his life, he's not had a bath. He's stinky. His clothes are tatter. You know, his manhood is almost, you know, being shown because he doesn't wear anything. You know, you can see his nails, you know. And this, this person say, excuse me, can I have a conversation with you? I'd like to have a conversation with you. Would you just walk up to that person and say, yes, come, let's have a conversation. So, what, 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 do, you, what do you want? Oh, hey, excuse me, can you give me a direction to would you even entertain that person? Would you, wouldn't you look at that person and just take a walk? <laughs> a quick, you, you increase the pace of your walk because who wants to have a conversation with? You get my point? So when the enemy comes to you, he does not look like a, a madman. When he wants to have a conversation with you, when he wants to speak to you about something, amen, that will cause you to compromise, amen, yes, and, and derail you from the path, he comes as an angel of light he comes as an angel of light because amen his name is yes lucifer is the light bearer <laughs> like i always say he bears the same name with christ is the morning star you can be deceived easily deceive in fact he deceive you in areas you will never expect him to deceive you and that is the crux of the message that we're dealing with on this you see our i said to us not too long ago i said our understanding of warfare is being upgraded so that amen how we deal with issues of intercession must move away from our former position amen of understanding we now we now need to have a more advanced concept today our warfare has to do with the quality the condition amen of our mindset in terms of discerning yes the activities of the enemy and how to respond swiftly do you hear my my, my description we must take warfare to the realm of thoughts. How to lay hold. How to take captives of thoughts. Now, if you have not been equipped or trained to know that battles are fought in thought realms. In realms of imagination. That battles are fought, amen, within the context of, you know, conscience. The battles are fought in the realms, amen, of what is known and defined as truth. The battles are fought, amen, in the realms, amen, of human personalities. The battles are fought in the realm, all right, of representation and, of course, misrepresentation. If you don't know all of that and your battle, your idea of battle and warfare is just, you know, there's a darkness coming, you understand? And I need to fight against that darkness. And you cannot die, suffer. You cannot identify the spirit behind what you call darkness. You're defeated.
The hour has come for you to be awakened from your slumber for our salvation. That salvation is not speaking to a man. The initial salvation when we give our life to Jesus. No, it's not talking about that. It's talking about the redemption, hallelujah, of our soul, the redemption of the earth. Bible says the earth is groaning, yes, for the revealing, for the manifestation of the sons of God. There are things that God is redeeming today, all right? Yes, that we, are, we don't even have a, a clue about. There are cities, nations, dimensions of human lives that belief system that are going through redemption. That was salvation is speaking to redemption. He said, for our salvation or redemption is nearer than when we first believed. So you see, so it's not talking about, you know, uh, you didn't believe. Of course, to, be, to first believe means to have given your life to Jesus. So if you are first believe, it means that you're already saved. So what salvation is he talking about? That's what I'm explaining. This salvation deals with all those intricate areas of our soul life. Those dimensions that we are clueless, that we are blind to. The salvation is the light of God. Our salvation is nearer. The light of God, the illuminating light of God, amen, is nearer than when we first believe. Amen. They are exposing those areas of our life. So we are able to do what? We are able to shine the same light into the realm, amen, of human life, of human, you know, culture, of human, you know, a, a belief system. Because, listen, you can only go and defend truth to the degree you know the truth. That's why people who are atheists who are into all of these things, they will argue with you based on their persuasion of certain knowledge. How, how, do, how can you say, you know, God is real when you have never seen God before? This is just an illusion. This is just a deception, they will tell you. And they will argue. They will argue. Why, why? Nobody argues without a stand of argument, without a position of argument. So their position of argument is the fact that, well, this thing you claim you believe is not real. It's not visible. So it's a make-believe. But if you can prove them wrong based on a higher truth, if they are willing, they will change. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Now look at that. The night is nearly over. So it's saying to us that this issue that we're dealing with speaks into the issues of the night. One nature we can see, one thing that we know about the night is that the night is limited. When you are in the night hour, you are limited in every dimension. When you live within the context of what is known as the night, you are limited. In night, people sleep. If you are traveling in night, you can't travel that fast. Or else you're going to make accident. You know that? No matter how bright your light is. Because there are certain things you won't see. So night speaks, amen, of a period, amen, of limitation. A period where, all right, we need to slow down. A period where the enemy, and of course we know that the enemy operates in the night. Why does he operate in the night? Because he knows that's the time people are... You know, weak people are tired, people want to sleep, all right. But, you know, even if you have all the energy, you know, and the environment, society demands that you slow down because it is night. Because it is night, and, and some of some of us, many of us, in fact, all of us will have that night period when Jesus was hung on the cross. He called it the hour of darkness, the hour of the night. When he, when we died on the cross, the Bible says suddenly, for six hours, the whole the whole earth, Amen, was covered in darkness. It was a night period. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Scripture says, and God said, whenever God speaks, He brings light. Oh Jesus. The word of God always bring the word of God always changes season. When God spoke, it changed the season. Darkness was upon the face of the day, and God said, God's word is light. It illuminates, it separates. That's why you cannot live outside the context of the word of God. You will die because the night will limit you. You will make accidents. Because you don't have enough illuminate, illuminating light. You don't have the glory of God. God's light is his glory. Are you, are you following? 
the day hallelujah we're reading he said for our salvation is nearer i'm reading romans 12 our salvation is nearer than when we first believe what's the attitude here when you're getting amen into the into the season where amen the day is about to break that is the time you feel amen you want to go into slumber you feel tired you feel weak all right when you've been awake through the night you've been walking through the day let's say you're doing 24 hours you know walk all right you will notice that by the time you clock you know you've been walking you've clocked 12 12 midnight by 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 2 3 by 2 3 4 a.m your body all right begins to fight i need to sleep all you, all your body will be screaming is i want to sleep i need sleep in fact i i'm not sure if i read this article or i heard somebody said this all right that now i need you to watch me while i said this this person said this made this profound statement he said he said human body all right can can take you know the the idea of not eating for 21 days human body you can you can you can live without eating for 21 days but this person says if i'm not mistaken this person says human body cannot take sleep non-sleep for three four days you go mad you you you, you lose it and i'm like whoa so <laughs> you know we, we we like to i can pray i can fast for 21 days i can go 40 days the way god designed the human body human body has got some reservoir of fluid that can still keep that air engine going but he said you put this person amen in a state of non-sleep for three days four days seven days that person will die i'm like wow that is powerful so that that period that is called the night period is important that we go to sleep the body the body needs sleep your body needs sleep like i told you yesterday i was out by the time i came back i was tired my energy was sapped because i've exert a lot of energy in the things and it's not it, it, listen i think I, I, in fact i think it's not just about what I, I was doing i think it's about more of what you know more of what i was trying to do because what saps our energy is not just the physical you know energy we exert it's about the condition of the quality of the meaning of the work we're doing you know why people are paid more in an office work than laborers because i've heard that argument that laborers supposed to earn more yes they should earn more but not as much as people who work in office you know why because people who work in office okay even though they're not carrying some you know cement and sand but their brain if if they if they ever show you the state of the condition of somebody working in the office really working i'm not talking about those who just you know play around no but people who read you the you think the brain is going to fry because the way amen their brain is active in terms of calculation decisions you know not knowing what to do at what occasion you see all of this has to do with what you will call you know initiative most people today even who are working don't have initiative and that's why you know you know you know there's an attitude today to walk that people don't care again back in the days when people are walking they are thinking ahead when I do this, when I do this, what will be the result? Okay, what can we get out of this? Including the clock. Everybody is busy because, amen, that is work. That is what, you know, the environment of work requires. That you bring your brain, that you bring, amen, your skill. Your skill has to do with the condition of your mind. You put it down. That is what you're supposed to be paid for. You don't get that today again. That has changed. Uh, no, I'm not the owner of my of the company. It's not my father's company. You hear people say things like that. So all the period in time you've gone to school to learn, blah 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 blah. All those when you bring that skill and you offer it to create a solution in the workplace, that's what you are paid for, and that's why they pay you big time. And if they pay you lesser than that, you should make a demand that you need more. Why? Because you know what you're bringing to the table. 
you know the value you are adding to the company I mean that's sometimes I ask myself Lord help me just touch the life of people to be a blessing to me so they can see what I'm doing because if you don't value what I'm doing if you don't value I mean these are some truth that people will go and learn in some you know psychological God knows what some NLP you know course and you know they are, you pay you pay you know uh, maybe a, a, a thousand rand per you know per an hour less than an hour you pay, yes you pay you pay you pay big time there's a course i took recently you know on nlp i have to i pay i pay good some good money why because i know i want to i want to learn those things. i want to know how the world thinks about you know certain dimension you pay for it but see, I'm not asking you to pay, but I'm asking you to, su to support our work so that, you know, I don't get discouraged also. I you understand, yes. And thanks to all those who support what we're doing. But the point that I'm making is these are important principles that allow us, amen, to enter into dimensions of values. So that when we make decision, we make decision, amen, based on the truth that we know. The truth you know sets you free. What you know changes your behavioral pattern, changes your attitude. Listen, you don't know a truth until that truth has changed you. I like that. You don't know a truth until that truth has changed you, at least in that, in that space, in that aspect, amen, of, of you know, of your ignorance you don't know a truth until that truth you don't know a thing until you are able amen to write about it to talk about it amen and to teach others that's the definition of truth if you know truth you are persuaded about you can't know a truth and just go keep it somewhere go hide it somewhere or you know go you know shelve it somewhere that's not knowing the truth the truth means that amen you are able to produce a fruit after what you have received you know when you know a truth i'm now i'm I'm trying to use a reversal word now. When you know something, let me not say a truth. When you know something, could be in any area of life, and you have, you've come to be persuaded about that thing, what do you do? You produce a fruit. E.g., when you, your body knows you know, something about a desire, what do you do? You produce a fruit after that desire. Yes. You, 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 you cannot produce something that <clears throat> you're not persuaded about. It could be positive or negative. We are always, you know, persuaded about something. When you want to commit a sin, and I, I, I want you to look at sin from this, you know, angle. You are, you are persuaded that that thing is going to give you pleasure. Yes. You're persuaded that that thing, that act is going to give you pleasure. And it's that pleasure that gives you momentum, that gives you passion to run after it. Even though that may be a lie. You understand? But you, the mind doesn't know that that is a lie. The mind says, you want this thing, right? Let's go for it. So the mind would do and create everything, amen, to push you to that point where that, that desire that you want becomes a reality. That is why it is very, amen, it are important that we know where we are channeling our desire because your desire is a reflection of your belief and your belief amen will manifest no matter no matter where or how your belief will always manifest that's why the lord amen will always warn us against believing in the wrong thing he will always charge against what we believe be careful of what you hear be careful of what you hear, he will say to them. Because how you hear will define how you're going to respond. For our salvation is nearer than when we first believe. The night is nearly over. That was where we stopped. The night is nearly over. And I spoke to you about night season. Night limits. Night is a time where, amen, the forces of darkness, yes, you know, you know, make the best use of that opportunity they, they use the opportunity of the night season to do whatever they need to do because in the night normal people go to sleep they go to rest but these people amen don't go to rest amen yes the night is nearly over the day has has drawn near hallelujah can you see when the day begins to draw near 
you, 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 suddenly you begin to have good energy. You know, when you sleep well and you, you know, it's morning time, you wake up, what you should have, amen, is, is motivation. Hallelujah. Yes, it's agility. It's a, it's a, it's a passion to, to want to hit the day, you know, and make the best of the day. Be productive if you slept well. So the day gives you inspiration. It gives you motivation. Hallelujah. It awakens you amen, to a new opportunity. Hallelujah. The day has drawn near. So let us lay aside the deeds of darkness. Let's lay it aside. The deeds of darkness. As in the daytime. Nobody embraces the deeds of darkness in the daytime. What are they saying? The day of the Lord is near. And the day of the Lord is not a night time. The day of the Lord is a daytime. And day exposes. Oh God help me. You know. Just before I, I came to broadcast this morning. I, I, I observed something very very. You know. Uh, uh, important. I guess it was important to me. You know. Behind the house. Here. Behind the house. There are two uh, lights. There are two, you know, uh, uh, security lights. There's a bigger halogen light and then there's a smaller one that is, you know, uh, just at the top of where my office is. All right. And uh, it's been, it's not been working for, for a while. So, you know, I finally got a, an electrician to fix it, you know, a few days ago. So that light, the two halogen were, were on. And of course, the reason for that is because you know there's no house behind where we stay it's all you know uh, uh just an open you know a uh, uh, field where all kinds of things grow there and of course the mountain which is i i love it it's beautiful you understand because you don't need to be fighting any neighbor you know it, it, your neighbors are you know the birds and all of that anyhow so i off the first allergen uh, the first the main allergen light the big light i offed it because of course the the day was dawning so while I went, I went to make my tea, the second allergen light, I was able to look at it through the sliding door. I said, oh, I need to put up, put up this light. But you know, while I was thinking about that, it's like the Holy Spirit drew my attention. Just look at that light again. As I looked at it, I saw that as the day was dawning, as, as you know, the sun was coming out, it makes that light almost redundant, irrelevant. The light was on, but I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, wow, this light doesn't look bright. Of course, it doesn't look bright because there's a higher light. There's a brilliant, there's a more super light that is shining. So the point was that even, hallelujah, in your, in your darkness, the light that you have may be very powerful. But as the greater light shines... And I'm, I'm looking at that, connecting it to what the Bible say about Lucifer, who is defined as, you know, the light bearer. is a lesser light. Yes, it's got light, but that light is, de is deceiving. And if you don't know that, all right, you, you will be captured. And the reason why you won't know that a metal light is deceiving is because you don't know that there is a highest light called the, the you know, the, the, the sun that is going to shine. And when the sun shines, you know that every other light, amen, no matter how brilliant they are, amen, they are swallowed. The sun makes every other light irrelevant. It's like, uh, uh But of course, when the sun is not there, you need those lights. I don't know if anybody get that point. And I'm like, wow. It, you know, it's like that light almost means nothing. Why? Because the sun is coming out. So you hardly see the value of that light. But you still need to put it off because it will be a waste of energy. But wait when amen, the sun has set. You need those lights. You need the two allergy at least to keep you. They are not the brightest. They will not be as, as bright as the sun. You will not be able to see everything. But guess what? They still shine. <coughs> so my point is, why don't we live in the dimension amen, of the brilliancy of the sun perpetually? So we don't need lesser light. Because that's what the enemy does. 
He offers to us the light of Lucifer and we think we're walking in the light. Oh God help me here. And we're deceived. And this is where religion <clears throat> comes in. This is where people use all kinds of gimmicks. You will see a bit of light. People who went to TB Joshua's you know, church. There was a bit of light they were seeing there. They watched, they watched the TV. They saw cripple walking. They saw, you know, miracle. They saw all kinds of things. Then they were persuaded. Then they left their country. Some of them, amen, left their family to go to synagogue only for them to meet darkness. But they were attracted by something that looks like light. That sounds like light. God help us. May we not be deceived. Friends, I'm only able to do one, you know, one scripture today. It's amazing, isn't it? The day has drawn near, so let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Please go back and read Romans 13. Can you see that light is an armor? Now what is light? Let's look at that again. The day has drawn near, so let us lay aside the deeds of darkness. I quickly want to emphasize on that work, on excuse me, on that word, the deeds of darkness. Darkness is an active word. Darkness is not the way we look at it. Oftentimes we think darkness is just a state. Darkness is not just a state. Darkness is active. Darkness, amen. Is a reflection of belief, attitude, is a reflection, amen. Because everything that amen we see that we define to be darkness are always something that is evil, but that evil is carried out. If evil is not carried out, how do we know it's evil? How do we know that stealing is evil? How do we know that lying is evil? How do we know, amen, that you know, uh, uh, you know fighting and all of that is evil? How do we know that? Because we see the act. We see the fruit. And that is what we need to check in our life. Anything in our life that contradicts or that is an act of the nature of Christ, the ways of Christ, the will of Christ, no matter how small that thing is, it could even be anger. It's evil. Because they say, yes, you can be angry, but do not sin. Can you really, can, can you really manage your anger to the point that you do not sin? The point is, avoid being angry because there's a tendency that when you're angry, you will sin. Because anger makes us do things we're not supposed to do. Anger will make you do things, amen, you vow you're not going to do. It's a release of an emotion. You see, that's the point that I'm making. The enemy will walk on your condition of of thoughts a condition of belief amen yes particularly when you feel you've been violated when you feel you've been violated you want to react when you feel amen that somebody amen something amen yes has violated your values you want to react because our life is basically defined by our values so when somebody comes and trample on your values and say your value means nothing Ah, you fight. So the law says, Amen. We need to be very careful of this. Now, let's let me finish. Let me finish verse 13. Let us behave. Amen. Remember, he said, put on the armor of light. So we light must be put on. We must wear light. How do you wear light? You wear light, amen, by wearing the, the values, the nature, the character. Which of course can be summarized as the fruit of the spirit. You wear it. Right? So when you are acting, when you are behaving, when you are interacting with people, they must see the fruit of the spirit in your life. By walking 
and acting based on the fruit of the spirit, you are manifesting the fruit of light. Why? Because those are the prism, excuse me, those are the, the you know, the values or character, amen, that are manifested when light goes through a prism. When light goes through a prism, you see, amen, the nature of light. You see the character of light, which of course is manifested through those seven colors. Those seven colors, amen, are reflection of, amen, what light means or what the fruit of the spirit is. Jesus is light, amen, but the light of Jesus cannot be seen until it passes through the prism of our life, which reflects, amen, in the character, in the values, in the behavioral pattern, in our attitude, yes. So you can't say I have the light, but we can't see the fruit of the light. You're not wearing the, the armor of light like amen. De Joseph's father made amen for Joseph the coat of many colors. What that coat represent was light. Joseph, amen, was given the coat of light. And that light, amen, is characterized in the seven colors. But you won't see them, amen, because they need to go through a prism. The prism is the character, is the values of our life, is the is the pattern of our thinking. And that must grow, amen, for people to see it. Hallelujah. I love that. I love the way we just give that, you know, explanation. Is that, does that make sense? So people must see, amen, the character of Christ in you. And that character, of course, then laid the foundation. So that when the fruits of the Spirit, excuse me, so that when the gift of the Spirit is in operation, it is tampered, it is balanced by the fruit of the spirit. The day I just said. So when the gift of the spirit is in operation, the gift of the spirit oftentimes is what we define as the power gift. And that is what attracts people. But if that attracts people, people then must see the fruit of the spirit. Because the fruit of the spirit is what maintains the gifts of the spirit in our life. This should not confuse you. This should bring clarity and perspective to your life. Because somebody can sh display amen, a gift, <clears throat> ability to interpret tongues. You understand? That's the fruit of the Spirit. Ability to exercise healing, power, miracle. Guess what? <clears throat> to a certain degree, the powers of darkness can also operate in that dimension of power. But they cannot duplicate the gift. They cannot manifest the gift because the, the gift comes from the fruit of the Spirit of Christ. Where does the gift come from? Of course, from the from the from the spirit of Christ. But power can be amen replicated because people can go into all kinds of things and get power. Amen. Amen. TB Joshua was not talking about you know him using the powers of darkness. And in fact, people who use this, you know, all kinds of demonic way of manipulation, they don't tell you that they are using, amen, you know, the, the, the that they are passed from the paths of darkness. They, because they know that you will recognize that. So what they want you to see is the fruit of that power, which could mean, amen, healing, deliverance, all of that, blah, 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 blah. You understand? But if you begin to scrutinize their lifestyle and you're seeing something contrary to what they are manifesting, you should run away. The gift and the fruit must work hand in hand. That's my point. The fruit and the gift of the spirit one should not be preferred to the other but one amen should define the manifestation of the other and that is the fruit of the spirit because one day gift will cease but the fruit will continue to last the kingdom of god is built amen on both the gift and the fruit of the spirit but the fruit of the spirit is what defines the longevity of the gift of the spirit. That's a good way to end, right? I hope this morning, the things that we have shared has brought perspective. I know we didn't finish, but we need to begin to stop. Maybe I should finish reading the scripture, then I'll stop. Let us behave, you know, uh, decently as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness. Not in sexual immorality and debunkery, 
not in dissension and jealousy. Instead, clothe yourself. Remember the first one. He said, put on the armor of light. Now, verse 14 is repeating himself again, but in a different way. He said, instead, clothe, clothe yourself. Remember I told you about Joseph being clothed. Era? Yes, by the, by the uh, coat of many colors. Yes, that coat of many color is a reflection of what? If you remember, light. When you take that coat, amen, and put it through the prism, what you will see is light. And when you take the light and put it through the prism, what you see, amen, is those seven colors. You understand? Instead, clothe yourself with the Lord. Clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and make no room for the desire of the flesh. <laughs> Brother Paul, what are you saying? Are you saying that I can put on the Lord Jesus Christ and still open the door for the enemy to sneak in? Yes. Make no room for the desires of the flesh. So you're putting on the Lord Jesus, but you're also making no room. You are preventing any area that the enemy can use to sneak into your life. Friends, what have we been talking about? We've been dealing with, amen, issues of deception. We've been dealing with issues that will allow us, amen, to, to expose the works of the enemy. Amen. To, to neutralize the works of the enemy. Why? Because the enemy is seeking to use deception. Amen. To lay us into the point where we are deceived. So we are engaging. Amen. In spiritual warfare. But this warfare is speaking into the dimension. Amen. Of the nature of life we need to have. Amen. So that we are not deceived. So that we are not layered into the lies of the enemy. I hope the things that I have shared with us this morning. Amen. Make sense to you. This is the concept of engaging in kingdom warfare. And this warfare requires. Amen. That we are dynamic in our lifestyle. In our you know, interaction. That we are dynamic. That we are not captured. That we are not layered. That we are not entrapped by the enemy. Okay? That we are not, you know, that, that we don't fall into, yes, all those, you know, traps that the enemy has laid for us. We want to be awakened. We want to be alive. We want to be, you know, empowered by the Spirit. And all of this, amen, requires that we have the knowledge of truth and know how the truth operates. Amen, friends? Well, I am done for this morning. I believe that this word, amen, has brought change, has brought hope, has brought light, has brought grace into your space. Thank you so very much for listening this morning. This is part of the training we've been you know, doing on the vision to occupy till Christ returns. All right. So while we're doing this, the Lord began to speak to us about having the mind of Christ. So from the concept of the mind of Christ, we've been talking about how to understand, how to live life, how to, you know, allow the Lord, if you will, to occupy every area of our life with his light, with his values, with his principle, with his grace. All of this will grant us insight to know how to survive 2024 because in 2024 we are beginning to see how God is using his light to expose darkness and it's in this level amen that we'll be able to become indeed worthy vessels and instrument that God can use amen in advancing his kingdom and that kingdom begins by amen us living within the context of a life that is being occupied by Christ that there is no area of our life amen that is left for the enemy amen to entrap or to occupy so thank you I've just basically recap what we have been talking about I hope this makes sense if it doesn't make sense please go back and watch amen the you know the program you know the the the, the broadcast again and please recommend it to somebody who need who need insight understanding all right share this uh, messages share them on your timeline you know if you if you know that god god is using these things to change your life why don't you share them on your timeline all right uh, except you're not sure if you're sure why don't you let somebody else you know receive this truth and let let your life be a blessing to them all right and please uh, uh, don't stop to pray for this work please continue to support this work Thank you so very much, everyone, for joining this morning. We will see you again, hopefully, uh, uh, tomorrow. God is building his house, and may he continue to lead us. God bless you. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.